Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you Wednesday, June twenty eighth. Getting to the end of the month, end of the quarter, half year mark. Crazy, right? Um, trading six months uh, already this year. Wow. Um, got a stack of uh, central bank squawk today. BOJ, BOE, ECB, Fed, all speaking uh, at the sort of central bank conference in Sintra. So that'll be interesting. Watch out for late afternoon moves. I mean, everyone's going to be hawkish. I guess the interesting one's going to be BOJ. Is um, Ueda going to be hawkish about Japanese rates? Um, but we all know that what Lagarde and Powell's going to say. We know all along what Bailey's going to say. So all eyes on what the BOJ is going to say. I don't expect him to say too much. Um, but he's the uh, he's the outlier as far as speakers are concerned. Let's look at Aussie. Uh, got bushwhacked last night uh, with some very low inflation data. Traded down uh, down to sixty six twenty. Um, you can see it was up up around ninety and and uh, low inflation which was surprised a lot of people. And you have to start thinking, what happens if inflation all around the world just kind of goes lower? Uh, and this is all fanciful poppycock um, talk about raising rates more, raising rates more, raising rates more. Because at some point, there's going to be a problem, right? You can already see it in the UK when the mortgage is at 6 7%. Um, there's all kinds of debt out there that um, people borrowed originally at one or two percent and when that has to get rolled at six or seven it's it's going to be a problem we've all talked about it in the corporate real estate space and some of these leveraged loan funds um, just doesn't the math doesn't make sense to me it seems that you need to be a little bit worried about this uh, and this can have some serious repercussions um, anyway Let's see, Aussie, Aussie inflation went down lower, so that was a surprise. Let's look at this cable chart. It's kind of ringing bells for me. It looks like we're going to take a little uh, trip down through 126.84. Um, what's going to drive this? Is it going to be Bailey? I don't think so. Um, is there any cable news? We have also Pill speaking today. He's not going to say anything too out of the ordinary. I don't really know what's going to drive this, uh, but the chart now just looks like she wants to go left. I had some consolidation here after the BOE. This is BOE raises 50, and now this is the world digesting what this means for the UK. Um, I'll just summarize it for you. The UK is fucked, um, and one of these days or one of these hours, uh, cable is going to have to reflect that so keep an eye on uh, 126.84 it's an interesting level uh, and maybe will lead to a leg lower in cable the fact that Aussie took a little nose dive today is also going to help the chances of this happening let's look at gold it's been a pain in my ass this gold um, not really in a P&L sense but just trying frustratingly to get long looked okay especially the other day we bought 15s it looked like it was going to bullish engulf did not now you just have to see what happens at 1900 um sure looks like again this this setup down here at 1910 is exactly like the setup at 1930 kind of a double bottom there's going to be stops below we feel like it's going to be a fake out can you buy 1902s um, the problem with all of this is you know we, you're catching these catching the, the proverbial falling knife it's a very very hard way to trade um, 
there's a part of me that's just like, don't even look at gold and just buy it through 1985, uh, which is sort of the medium term break trade in gold on it when it sort of turns around. Um, but let's just see unlikely uh, to be the day gold makes a move higher. The day gold decides to go higher is the day that we have risk off and the market really views the tightening cycle to be over. Um, obviously, the 10-year interest rate at 376 is kind of saying that, um, but we need the short end of the curve also to start reinforcing this turn in rates before gold can turn. Let's look at dollars are. We were sniffing around yesterday uh, at 40, but uh, then we sort of backed off the whole thing. It's kind of right in the middle, so between 18 and 19. Not much joy here, um, but we will be watching very closely what happens up here at 1877. If we get up here at the end of the week, and if we have uh, some more risk off, dollars are our favorite, uh, our favorite horse for that kind of trade. Let's look at sterling yen. If cable goes, this has to go as well. Um, we're obviously at hysterical, hysterical uh, valuations in sterling yen. Um, this whole complex. Is really only going to turn when dollar yen turns, uh, and dollar yen is really only going to turn when the BOJ um, changes their policy, uh, which might be never right. So this dollar yen might go to 150, and if it does, even if cable turns turn again, they just stick in the 180s. Um, if you want to be cowboy Jim, um, 145.10 is the resistance. You can see this is sort of post BOJ intervention we kind of put a floor in at 145 for for a few days and then bang through that uh, we headed to 125 this is going to be uh, strong resistance the first time so if you want to be contrarian and fade the freight train the carry freight train higher 145.10 um, is your is your point not much else out there on the charts today. Um, we're focusing on cable. Uh, we're not going to chase this Aussie. I mean, I guess the trade in Aussies, you could sell any kind of rally. Um, but we're not going to, we're not going to be bothering with that. We're going to be looking at cable downside. Um, 126.84 is the point. How and when to get short. There's many ways to do this. Uh, this is the focus today. All right, I've said enough. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Ciao.